So she does inject a story about little Archie, her uh, oh. son, with Prince Harry into this into this podcast. And now this is making a bunch of news because you would think that little Archie was basically in the towering inferno the way. <laughs> the way this story goes down already there's been a lot of pushback on um, her talking about their trip to South Africa and what allegedly happened with their baby um, we'll get to this in one second we're just getting it right re- okay we got it here it is sound bite 23 the moment we landed we had to drop him off at this housing unit that they had had a staying in he was going to get ready to go down for his nap we immediately went to an official engagement in this township called Nyanga and there was this moment where I'm standing on a tree stump and I'm giving this speech to women and girls and we finish the engagement, we get in the car and they say, there's been a fire at the residence. What? There's been a fire in the baby's room. What? Our amazing nanny Lauren, who we'd had all the way until we, um, in Canada here, Lauren in floods of tears, she was supposed to put Archie down for his nap and she just said, you know what? Let me just go and get a snack downstairs. And she was, was Lauren's from Zimbabwe. And we loved that she would always tie him on her, her back with a mud cloth. And her instinct was like, let me just bring him with me before I put him down. In that amount of time that she went downstairs, oh my God. Oh the my heater gosh. in the nursery caught on fire. There was no smoke detector. Someone happened to just smell smoke down the hallway, went in, fire extinguished. He was supposed to be sleeping in there. Everyone's in tears. Everyone's shaken. And what do we have to do? Mm. Go out and do another official engagement. I said, this doesn't make any sense. Can you just... Uh, Why did you not bring him? I was like, can you just tell people what happened? And so much, I think, optically, the focus ends up being on how it looks instead of how it feels. And part of the humanizing Mm. and the breaking through of these labels and these archetypes and these boxes that we're put into is having some understanding on the human moments behind the scenes that people might not have any awareness of and to give each other a break. Because we did. We had to leave our baby. Oh my God, Dan, I can't. The child wasn't even in the room. (laughs) He wasn't even in the room. (laughs) What's happening? I mean, this actually made me so angry on so many levels, Megan, because firstly, the idea uh, that Markle and Harry are innocent victims who are going to be pushed around and do anything they don't want to do is baloney, complete baloney. I knew all of the people who were working for Harry and Meghan at that point. And believe me, if Harry and Meghan didn't want to do something, they didn't do it. There were so many ways you can get around a situation like that. Megan could have come down with a stomach bug and would have been allowed to stay at home. So this idea that the evil royal family forced her to go and do something she didn't want to do in a time of trauma, quote unquote trauma, rubbish. But let's get to the actual nub of the argument, right? Maybe little Archie had a near miss, but he wasn't in that room. The nanny was with him at all times. So even if a fire had broken out in that room, the nanny would have immediately removed him from the room. The reality is Archie was not at serious risk. None of the journalists who were on the tour heard a thing about an apparent fire where Harry and Meghan were staying. And again, there are hundreds of journalists on that tour. It's all very curious, uh, especially given we know uh, Markle's track record in terms of telling little porky pies in interviews. But all of that aside, Megan, again, to me, this is about the delusion of Ms. Markle, the idea that she should have a God-given right not to go to work after something terrible nearly happens. Well, that's not a right that you have if you work at a supermarket checkout if you're a receptionist at a doctor's, if you're a brain surgeon, it doesn't matter what you do. You have a responsibility to wider society to get out there and work whenever you possibly can. But this idea that Megan thinks she shouldn't have had to do that and let lots of people down in South Africa, who, by the way, uh, the people who she was seeing on that tour were in the most appalling conditions. I mean, in the most uh, terrible poverty just shows you what Megan is in this for. She's not in it for anyone else. She is in it for herself. She only ever thinks about herself. And we know that given we've seen the way she treats her blood relatives. 
I love how she thinks if she just exposes herself to us, we're going to change our opinion about her. The problem is we haven't had the behind the scenes talks the way that she's delivering here. And that's why we don't love her. No, that's not it. We've seen enough to have made our judgment. And we don't really care that your perfectly healthy baby who was never in any trouble <laughs> um, had something that may or may not have happened, because as you point out, that would have been a huge scoop for one of these reporters to find out that the baby Archie was nearly, you know, in a fire. OK, <laughs> that would have been a huge news story. Weird how it never broke um, this. And, and what she's really to told us is that, as you point out, she's weak, she's pathetic and she doesn't like to work hard. I'm going to guess. Well, how old is the queen now? Ninety six. Mm, yeah, 97 okay. now. I'm going to guess in those 96 years, and whatever, she was 25 or whatever, she took the throne, 75, which had her year, whatever it was, the Jubilee. Um, I'm going to guess in those 70, 75 years, she had a couple of bad things happen to her. There, there have been some world wars. She's lost all of her family members that she grew up with. She always went, she's famous for doing her duty. Stiff up her upper lip, no matter what is, ails her, she puts herself out there unless she absolutely physically is incapable of doing it. What, can you imagine her whining like this over an injury that never occurred, over something that never even happened? Never, never. Even after the death of her husband, Megan, the darkest moment in her life, the Queen was determined to return to her public engagements because she knows her job is not about her. It's about the wider public. And that's, of course, why Meghan was never going to like it in the royal family, because it was all about a greater cause uh, than uh, increasing the brand awareness of a certain Meghan Markle. But come on, let's just think for a moment as well. We're not talking about hard labour. We're not talking about someone going to spend 12 hours behind the fry vat at McDonald's. She was going in a chauffeured limousine to spend a very short amount of time around members of the South African public, who she claims that she cares so much about, before being driven back in a chauffeur-driven limousine to another very expensive new accommodation where she would have her every wish and whim dealt with by all of her staff, Megan. You know, yeah, royal exactly. servants, essentially, who are there to serve her. So I'm sorry if I can't feel a scintilla of sympathy. Do you ever wonder if your vitamins are working? Clinical studies show that Healthy Cell's new ingestible gel technology called Microgel delivers maximum nutrient absorption, 165% more than tablets. It tastes great too. It's hard to make vitamin liquids or gels taste good naturally, but Healthy Cell products are the best tasting pill-free supplements on the market. Go pill-free and get up to 15 pills worth of nutrients in one ultra-absorption gel pack saving you money and time and giving you effective doses in the process. Take a single great tasting gel pack at home or on the go, and it's super great for travel, so you'd love that. And you can mix it into drinks or blend it into smoothies, what have you. Old-fashioned tablets, capsules, and powders contain synthetic other ingredients, mm, such as binding glues, uh-oh, flow agents, don't want to know, fillers, coatings that could irritate your gut, and so on. You don't want it. Plus, it's made in the USA, so Healthy Cell is a good alternative. Go visit HealthyCell.com slash Megan. All right, that's going to get you the discount. HealthyCell.com slash Megan. Or you can just use that code Megan when you check out for 20% off your very first order. HealthyCell.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.